Howdy. I just stumbled across a very interesting paper. MESS 0022 GEO 2.23 Fresh Groundwater and Mineral Resources in Gravity and Magnetic Anomalies of AR1MO and KY Aka the New Madrid Seismic Zone SFR Kareaga BSEE MSTOM Whatever they mean October 2022 So this is quite fresh. Abstract. In this study and continuation of the messy geo series, the author overlays mineral crystal depositions in the new metric seismic zones zone with the G and B field intensity anomalies in combination with known groundwater and known fracking earthquake data. Keywords Arkansas, Missouri, Kentucky, New Metric Fault Anomalies, Groundwater Earthquakes, crypto explosive sites, caves, silver, magnetic accumulations, gravity anomalies. For those who have watched my videos, you probably know. <laughs> That this is something I really like to read about. There's not too much like this somehow. Figure 2. Minerals of KY overlaid with electrogeology and EPMC related sites. If you related to mineralogy, credit American Geosciences or two author. Very interesting. And I really just finally managed to open that. So let's have a little read. EB refers to electrobolites, while KB to kine kinetic bolides. PT refers to a Paratian thunderbolt. The Zion marked locations have interesting or unusual resource information with important EPMC historical value. It is also interesting to note that several of the Nikotani fortresses of the four ancient branches of the Alegevi, often called the Padukans or White Giants, are directly associated with these sites. For example, the Beria, KY Indian Fort Mountain, AK the Pinnacles, SNP, is located directly proximal to the electrogeological evidence of Dogfoot Hollow and the Pilot Knob, not to be confused with Pilot Knob SNP, which is part of the DBNF ley line, which may likely be electrogeological. However, the former pilot knob is almost assuredly so, and so is the proximal Indian Fort Mountain. Separately, Green River Knob is mentioned for its unusual elevation height in the area, but has nothing to do with the Green River Pearls or Shell Middens, although, although the entire region's karst or pseudo-karst nature should be taken into account both historically, as the mummies of the world's largest caves are intriguing, and the people of the caves, Chiloki, are central to many of these discussions, but also because the pseudo-karst formations are impossibly overlapped with clear electrical EDM etching, to be shown in future paper while being correlatively or casually proximal to the world's longest caves, fourth longest largest caves and some raised knobs with highly unusual etching superiorly orientated to incredible mineral deposits, depositions, issues the 
of the Fluor Spar and Higgs dome coincidences were covered in uh, in the last MESSY. Kentucky Geological Map Service with overlay. Click image to open expands. What we see in Kentucky is an intricate set of faults combined with highly diverse mineral depositions, much of which are associated with the falls, suggesting highly unique and useful transmutative electrogeological processes. Incredible fluvial mineralization associated with the infamous abundance of water in Kentucky. Or a dual combination of them both, correlative or causative. Does the groundwater attract more electrogeological crypto explosives than average for other similarly sized regions of the world? Note, there is nothing spectac spectacular in the gravity anomaly of Mayfield to suggest a mineralogical cause of the gravity anomaly, or the tornado to target the area. So the most likely cause of the long track vector remains the magnetic accumulation intensity signal in the new Madrid, Madrid Fault, ETC. Yeah. I think tomorrow, since now it's in the middle of the night, but I think tomorrow, when I'm a bit fresher, I might be diving into that. <laughs> That's a very interesting paper. Very interesting words. Pseudokarst. Analyzes topics on these states can be reserved for later consumption. For now, the community should familiarize itself with the tools. Note the AR tool is anemic in both form and function, while the MO tool is extremely utilitarian. Utilitarian? The KY tool is detailed and extensive, but cumbersome over slow internet and memory intensive. There doesn't appear to be an overt reason for the magnetic peak in the Missouri Dangle, but the dendritic formations in mineral deposits in the hot springs region of Arkansas are undoubtedly an incredible poignant factor in the origins of these long track tornadoes. Perhaps the area, given its piezoelectric history, and killing birds after earthquakes is attractive to Birkeland current magnetic flux tubes connecting to the Van Allen belts or Sun ETC. And this enabled the proton density pump on December 10th, 2021 to cycle up some powerful supercells. <laughs> Whoa! It is really rare that I stumble across a paper like this. I know I tried to, I have been reading things from him like many times. I know somehow the name it popped, in recent times it popped all, up all over the place, but now he, it seems he got me. This is very interesting. Supercell columnar induction and capacitance demonstration. Okay, maybe tomorrow. The point is to demonstrate why we should expect the system to respond primarily to magnetic flux if there are clear definitive tracks. We should test this theory with long tracks in KY in the Kentucky uh, region. So basically, there is a tornado, there is geology, more geology, geology all over the place. What's that? Magnetic anomalies. Note the magnetic escarpment at the Fluorspar district and the magnetic accumulations in the Big South Fork regions and the escarpment in the lower DBNF. Also note the magnetic accumulation at Mayfield KY. Maybe KY means Kentucky. <laughs> mm. 
Limestone, Dolomite, Rock Castle, Sandstone, Sand Gravel, Alluvium, New Providence Shale, Iron Ore, Clay Bed. Oh man, I think I have to write this dude. Man, sir. Or however he likes to be called, but I think we have things in common. Karayaga. 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 Yes. This is very interesting. I found another one who's talking about groundwater, earthquakes, weather, couplings to geological formations and such. That's very interesting. Oh, man. When we compare figures 1 and 4, we see interesting magnetic overlays. If I only would have a computer. I just want... Can I click follow link, copy all? No. Arkansas. If I could do overlays, I would blow your mind tomorrow. <laughs> yes. But anyway, I just wanted to share this very interesting paper. I couldn't expect that it is so interesting. You know? Sometimes when you read something, you somehow feel some kind of resonance with the author or not. This, it doesn't matter what is it about. The content of the text isn't that. If not, like, I mean, if there's something else, like someone writes about someone else or something else, not it's his own stuff or her. But this, that's immediately we see some unique behaviors in the AR and um, our real food rift homogeneity in the groundwater with the origins of the tornado flux, but the vision because of the river. With the overall flow of the long track tornadoes, we also see homogeneity in the pine mountain flux with immediate difference. As expected, with the area inside the Crooked Smile Keystone and Upper Tennessee, Crooked Smile Keystone pattern. Yeah, Mr. What is it? Billy Alberton. Uh, Andrew Hall, there's a third one, which I cannot remember. But anyway, in fact, we also see differences in the VA Piedmont with the Blue Ridges flux as expected and is yet not exactly as expected with magnetic anomalies. Water is not magnetic, so this is to be expected. But since nothing ever happens, and it's totally boring, nowhere anything happens. I watch weather and keystone patterns and crater stuff and side-by-side -side pictures and playing around with stuff weather patterns and such. Trying to gather some pictures which could be probably useful be since obviously you can see with your own eyes. I cannot do overlays because they are all side by side. Making videos about bad weather, quakes, this was an example from Sweden. 
or like my very last video about surface conductivity anomalies and magnetic anomalies and the worst scenario of all is severe frost and a windless high pressure ridge that persists in the north says the director of the energy supply department of the national security agency I think I really have to write this man and ask for his opinion. Is there any good about what I think about these things or is it a waste of time? If it is a waste of time, I will stop thinking about it because is it, if it is a waste of time, I don't know. I don't think it is because I spent quite some time about these things thinking gathering pictures, gathering evidence, gathering information about whatever could be relevant for whatever part of the whole system. If you think this doesn't relate to white rivers, you are dead wrong. Because geology is the imprint or is vitrified weather in the Earth's crust. So there is a straight relation to that. Glaciers, volcanoes, quakes, all these are all one thing. There are just different parts of it. But anyway, once again, maybe I should try to make shorter videos, but I don't know. There would be so much other things to tell. And the evidence is just piling up Obviously, <laughs> I haven't even watched like really quakes today or read the news or whatever, but there's so much other stuff going on. I still try to write on my P paper since, what, more than a year, I guess. And there's also like, it's, it's hard to get something like that done because I don't have any office where I can retreat and be in silence and just be there. I do it when I have time or if I just get the inspiration, like, you know, if the fractal clicks into the focus to the paper, for example, you cannot force these things. So maybe one day it will be finished. I don't know. Let's see. There should be many other things written about. For example, this. There should be a paper written about that. Surface conductivity anomaly of Scandinavia and how it influences the weather in a decrease in Earth magnetic field. For example, this would be a title for a paper and then just start write an abstract and gather pictures and try to put everything into words and it's a big work. But first, maybe I try to get the peat paper finished. <laughs> Which uh, might be interesting to read for some people. Yeah. But anyway, thanks. Bye.